you know, the devil comes right back with his answer and said, Then Satan answered the Lord, Doth Job fear God for naught? God says, Have you considered Job? And he says, Does Job fear you for nothing? He says, Yeah, I've considered Job. I've looked at Job. I've watched Job. I've seen Job. But does he fear you for nothing? You get on down through there and you'll read where the devil says you put a hedge about him and you've blessed him and taken care of him and that's the reason why he fears you. But if you let me in there to take a crack at him, if you let those hedges come down a little bit, if you let me come in against him and take away some of his things that he has, I'll have him cursing you to your face. Brother, that's the kind of power our adversary has. The power of walking into the presence of a holy and righteous God. The power of contending with God. You say, well, that was back in the Old Testament. No, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that He is the accuser of the brethren that accuses them before the throne of God day and night. The devil still has some access to heaven and still has ability to accuse people down here right to uh, before God. That's some kind of power. And yet today people think that the devil is one that doesn't have any power. He has the power to test a man. He has the power to stir nations against a man because nations came in against Job. He has the power over the elements because fire came down from heaven and destroyed Job's sheep. He has the power to strip a man, but only if God says okay. He had that power, and he still has power. I want you to notice something else about the adversary, the devil, tonight. Not only his position and his power, but I want you to notice what his pleasure is. His pleasure is to deceive and to damn mankind. You know, the devil is a defeated enemy. Christ defeated him at the cross. And he is defeated. And he might not acknowledge it or admit it tonight, but he is a defeated enemy. But yet he still takes pleasure in deceiving and damning mankind. He wants to deceive people. He deceives them by lying to them. The devil's a liar. God is not a liar. God cannot lie. God has given us a book. This book contains no lie. This book is the Word of God. The Bible says, What if some should not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? It says, God forbid, yea, let God be true and every man a liar. Brother, God is true. God cannot lie. But the devil, he is a liar. He was a liar from the beginning. And the first time he shows up, he shows up to deceive. The first time he shows up to a man, he shows up to a woman on the face of this earth, and he deceives her into doing something that God told them not to do. You know what the devil's doing tonight? He's still deceiving mankind. If you're in here tonight and you've never trusted in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to save your soul from a devil's hell, let me tell you something, it's because the devil has you deceived and he'll lie and tell every kind of a lie to man that he can to keep him in darkness and keep him from trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. He lies. He contradicts God. He says God won't do this and God won't do that. And he has this world tonight believing that God is some kind of a big kiss and that the, there couldn't be a hell. If God's a God of love, there couldn't be a hell. And surely a, a merciful God wouldn't allow somebody to burn in a, in a fire forever and ever and ever. And you know what he's done? He's lied, he's deceived, and he's contradicted God. God says that he is a God of wrath. God says that he is a God of fire. God says that he has prepared a place, a place of hell and a place of torment for those that will not trust Jesus Christ. The devil also appeals to the intellect of men. And he tries to get men to look at things in an intellectual way. And Paul, when he talked about preaching in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he says about this, he said, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men, 
For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Man looks at things in an, in an intellectual way, and the devil appeals to the intellect of man. God, who is wiser, who is mightier, who is higher than man and the devil, he does things just the opposite way. And brother, there's a lot of people tonight that do not realize that the pleasure of the devil is to deceive and damn them. You say, well, I'm saved. The devil can't deceive me. Yes, he can. You get out of this book, the devil can deceive you. You get away from the Word of God, the devil can deceive you. And there are a lot of people that are saved and going to be in heaven that the devil has deceived. That's his pleasure. For a lost man, he wants to see that man go to hell and burn in hell. And throughout eternity in the lake of fire, the devil's just going to be laughing that he had deceived so many people. Then I want you to notice this. Not only his pleasure, but I want you to notice his prey. The adversary is praying. Who is his prey? You. You. Me. This world. If a person's lost, he wants to keep that person lost. And he'll do everything in his power to keep them. Together.